Hey guys, uh, I got an email question a few days ago. I wanted to take a few minutes to answer it and kind of talk about it a little bit. So the question was from a player and he wanted to know what I thought was the most important thing when it came to hitting. Was it mechanics? Was it bat speed? Was it, you know, there was a bunch of different things in there. And what I kind of want to talk about today is before we can even get to mechanics or bat speed or strength or anything like that, the most important thing when it comes to hitting is getting a good pitch to hit. Now, Ted Williams, I think, was one of the first people to really um, bring this to light back when he played, and he talked a lot about hitting, and that was one of his big things. He said the number one thing is to get a good pitch to hit, and I totally agree with that because – no matter how big or strong or athletic or powerful or um, bat, how great your bat control is or whatever it might be, if you don't get a good pitch to hit, you won't be successful. Nobody that plays baseball can hit a ball that is down and away or off the plate as well as they can hit a pitch that is in their zone whatever their favorite pitch is, something over the middle of the plate, something around the waist. Nobody is going to hit a bad pitch ball as well as a good pitch ball. So that's the number one thing. And I've heard one of my coaches um, a while back said that he would rather see someone or a player put a bad swing on a good pitch than a good swing on a bad pitch. And I kind of agree when he said that, that you'll be more successful if you're able to swing at good pitches. Good pitches the hit, and you don't chase bad pitches, because no matter how good you are, you're not going to be able to hit bad pitches. So I got Ted Williams' chart up here, and he made this chart uh, back when he played, and it's pretty much a strike zone. And it, it is a pretty big strike zone, but... Back in Ted Williams' day, the strike zone was a lot bigger uh, than it is now. So this chart pretty much goes, we can see here, from the kneecap all the way to almost letter high. And in every spot, it shows what his batting average was on that particular pitch. Now, we're talking about one of the best hitters of all time. And you can see by looking at this chart that his best area to do damage was pretty much right over the heart of the plate, about waist high. That's typically where it is for players. Now, some guys are better low ball hitters. Some guys are better high ball hitters. But in general, if you look at that meaty part of the plate right around the waist, that's where everybody's happy zone is. And it changes very, very small uh, areas for different players. It might be slightly, maybe a ball's within or a ball without or a ball with up or down. But in general, the average would be right around that area. Now, if we look at Ted's chart, we can see a couple of things. Um, the types of pitches that he likes, that he's looking for. We obviously notice that he likes the ball over the middle of the plate. You can see a lot of his 400 are in here, 390s, 380s. So my guess is he's looking for a ball middle to slightly in. He might be a, a middle to a ball's width in, hits the ball in a little bit better than he did away. Another thing that he did was he seemed to light the ball up a little bit. You get down into these numbers, they're around the 300s, which is still amazing. You get a ball a little bit up, he's in the 350s to 340s. So you can kind of see and get an idea of what he likes, where he hits the ball well, where he doesn't hit the ball well. We look where he's not hitting the ball well, down and away. Most guys trouble down and away. So this shows that even for the best hitter of all time, if he's chasing balls down and away, he's a 230, 240, 250 hitter. So if he were to swing at a lot of these balls in this area, he's not going to be successful. He sticks to his game plan. He gets balls over the middle of the plate. He's going to be very successful. So this is just another example of how you can do the same thing for yourself 
kind of find out what you like, what you don't like, and you have to attack those balls that you like. One of the biggest things I talk to a lot of guys about is knowing what you like to hit. What is your favorite pitch to hit? And it's important to know this. A lot of players, a lot of young players especially, don't really know. You can ask them, what's your favorite ball to hit? And they'll think about this, like, hmm, I'm not really sure. Sometimes I'll hear, you know, I, I like curve balls. Well, you might like curve balls, but that's not your best pitch to hit. Everybody's best pitch to hit is a fastball. It's the easiest pitch to hit. It's moving straight. After we've got that understood, that we want fastballs early in the count, now we have to look. Are we a middle in type of hitter? Are we a middle type of hitter? Are we a middle away? Do we like it up? Do we like it down? Everybody's different, but it's really important to know what you hit best, and then you have to start hunting for that pitch early in the count. So when we're o o, we're thinking we're attacking our favorite pitch. If it's not there, we're not swinging at it. Even if it's a strike, if it's low and away, and it's a strike, well, we take it. If it's down and in and it's a strike, well, we take it. If we're not looking for that. We need to be looking and only swinging at our favorite pitch when we're ahead in the count. I consider OO ahead. We're not chasing anything OO. 1 0, 2 0, 3 1. We're looking for our pitch. Now, obviously, once the, the count gets turned and we're behind in the count, you know, we're, we're 1 2, we're 0 2. Um, we got to adjust. We got to start opening up the strike zone now. We have to protect. Anytime we have two strikes, we're protecting. We already know that. But it's important when you're up in the count, do not chase strikes. Even if they're strikes, if they're not your strike, if they're not your favorite pitch, you don't swing at it. You tip your hat to the pitcher if it's 0-0 or if it's 2-0 or if it's 3-1 and he puts a ball in the corner and he gets a strike, you say, hey, great pitch. Make him throw it again. It's really, really difficult for a pitcher to put a ball exactly where he wants it time after time after time eventually he's going to make a mistake and when he does and he leaves that ball in your area that you like that's when you got to do big time damage with it because as you move up in levels the chances of him throwing in that area go down when you're younger they're going to miss over the plate a lot when you get older they're not so it's important to know what your favorite pitch is get that pitch early in the count and when you get it put a good swing on it